For nearly 30 years, legacy car manufacturers have been trying desperately to get people to buy their hydrogen-powered cars, particularly Toyota and Hyundai. And even a few others, though, including Honda, and even General Motors are working on hydrogen too. That said, BMW will have their first mass-produced hydrogen car coming out by the end of this year. Toyota have a new version coming out as well. And this is in spite of the fact that hydrogen-powered cars have almost zero demand worldwide. In fact, the market is so tiny that it represents less than 0.001% of all global car sales worldwide. And it's shrinking. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to have you with us. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. I'd love to see you personally at the Melbourne EV show. And if not in person, just come to the show anyway. That's on the 27th, 28th and 29th of June. I'll put a link in the description to the Melbourne EV Auto Show. Global sales of hydrogen vehicles have, well, they've crashed. In the first quarter of 2024, they fell to only 2,382 worldwide. That was a year ago, right? And that was a decline of 36.4% year over year. Figures from South Korean research firm SNE Research found that the world's two major hydrogen fuel cell makers, Hyundai and Toyota, both saw dramatic declines in sales. Now, these numbers are pretty terrible. I mean, we're talking about a global car market here of about 20 million cars per quarter. 20 million cars sold every three months worldwide. And yet, in the first quarter of 2024, I'll get to 2025 in a minute, sales were 2,382 in total worldwide. And the trajectory is clearly going down because sales had not gone up by 36%, but fallen by 36%. Well, now, in the first quarter of this year, sales have fallen a further 20%. In fact, not 20%, an additional 21.6%. For all of 2024 last year, for all of the entire year, though, only 12,866 fuel cell vehicles were sold globally. That was compared to 16,413 in 2023. So for all of last year, hydrogen fuel cell vehicles fell by 22%. Now, what is shocking about this is that, um, well, most of those were actually sold in China. I mean, China is clearly moving moving on to electric cars and hybrids, but primarily either e-revs or plug-in hybrids. Even though people think plug-in hybrids are really popular, the truth is that around 66% of all electrified cars sold in China are actually fully electric. So the market is moving to fully electric cars. Yet, China... Uh, they actually sold 7,562 hydrogen fuel cell vehicles in a market, to be fair though, of 32 million car sales last year. 7,562 were sold. That means that the majority of hydrogen fuel cell cars were sold in China last year. And this comes in spite of the fact that the oil and gas industry and car manufacturers like Toyota have been investing billions of dollars into hydrogen fuel cell technology. Not for the last few years, as many media pundits would tell you, that's completely false. They've been investing in it for more than 20 years. More than 20 years, and they're still pursuing it, even though sales represent less than 0.001% of the entire global auto industry. Now, I did a video a few days ago showing how the fossil fuel industry in combination with um, car manufacturers like Toyota and a couple of others, have been lobbying really hard and investing enormous amounts of money to get hydrogen fuel powered vehicles of any kind, whether that be trucks or buses or anything, cars to take off. They've invested enormous sums of money. We're looking at really well over $20 billion that's been invested over the last 20 years. And yet, this is where we're at. Clearly, it's not happening. Clearly, electrifying vehicles, whether that be electric buses, trucks, cars, pickup trucks, they are the future of the automotive industry. Now, some people might think that we'll have these small little petrol generators in our cars and we'll drive around and we'll have electrified cars that are hybrids of some sort. I don't agree with that. I believe almost all of the automotive industry will be electric. It's only a matter of time. Why? Well, the battery technology is just getting better every year. Solid state batteries are coming. 
the energy density of existing batteries are coming. Sodium ion batteries have come to the market. Battery prices continue to fall. Hydrogen prices, on the other hand, continue to do one thing, go up. They're increasing almost every year. This idea of green hydrogen, it's, well, it appears to be a myth perpetuated by the fossil fuel industry because it has not happened yet. Green hydrogen is still almost non-existent. More than 94% of the world's hydrogen is produced via fossil fuels. It's not green. And even then, unfortunately, the truth is that the price of hydrogen for anyone who is unfortunate enough to own a hydrogen car has tripled over the past five years. Tripled. It is now so expensive to fill your car or your vehicle of any type with hydrogen that it's economically really unfeasible. You've got to be a very wealthy person to want to drive a hydrogen car. As far as I'm aware, no one wealthy has been dumb enough to buy a hydrogen-powered car. So what is the future for hydrogen vehicles? Is it going to happen? Now, I formally, and I've said on this channel a few times, that I believe eventually hydrogen will work, but not for what people think, not for the trucks or bus industry, not for heavy vehicles, not for, not for transportation, but potentially for one thing, and that is shipping. I still think it will have a future in shipping. And the reason is because of what Tony Sebus says. The reason is because when we build out enough renewables for the world, we need to have 200%. We need to have an average of 100% more capacity than what we would usually need 99% of the time. Because sometimes you get a week where there's no sun. Sometimes you get a week where there's no wind. So you've got to be able to build out about 200%. What do we do with that extra 100% wind, solar, and battery capacity for 99% of the year when we don't actually need it? We actually make hydrogen. So I do think it will eventually happen. It's just going to take quite a while to actually get there. So guys, what do you think? What are your thoughts on this issue? Let us all know in the comments and thanks for watching. Bye-bye. This is the highest energy density battery the world has ever seen, period. To put it into context, the energy density of BYD's blade battery, which is in hundreds of different electric cars, is around 165 watt hours per kilogram, at least the existing generation is. This battery, 2,825 watt hours per kilogram. It's nearly 15 times as energy dense. And it has an efficiency of a staggering 99.7%. We have never seen anything like this ever before. But a lot of people are understandably very, very skeptical.